Hey guys, it's X, and today we're doing another one of Peanut's Diamond or Bust replays here. We have Peanut starting in the 8.30 position as the Red Terran, and her opponent, who is going by the name of Virgo, spawns as the Blue Zerg in the 6.30 position. Starting at close proximities, I see we have the Overlord moving to scout the nearest location to uh, to his base. And Peanut here actually, uh, actually asking if Virgo is Virgo's sign here, so kind of doing a little bit of psychological warfare, trying to get him to... Uh, fall off his game a little bit like oh my god is she hitting on me wait no wait he doesn't even know if she's a girl or not so he's not responding so I like that move on his part already countering her strategy going with the perfect counter strategy and not responding I mean if it's a girl I mean if you know it's a girl of course you're gonna you're gonna play into that but if it's a uh, if it's a guy and they ask you what your sign is you typically just want to tip your hat and say good day sir and then walk away <laughs> so uh, that's kind of what he did he said good day sir Oh no, he did it even better! <laughs> he, did, he has a better counter strategy than even mine. He says, sorry, man, that's perfect. Like if a guy asks you, hey, uh, what's your sign? You just say, look, man, I don't speak English, and then you walk away. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Good job, Virgo. Already starting off showing himself to be a, a an expert player, a master at this game. Probably, probably a pro Korean player already. Way beyond the diamond level, because he's very good at countering strategies. And Peanuts SCV now coming in to uh, scout. And it uh, looks like Virgo went for a 10 pool. So he's going to go for very early Zerglings. Peanuts going to spot this, but I don't know if she's going to be able to do too much about it. Ah, because they're in close proximity and his overlord spotted that. Where is that overlord? There it is. It's coming back home now. Well, actually, it's just hanging around at the outskirts of her base so that he can see what's in her base. But she can't see the Overlord, if you'll notice that. See, that's pretty, that's pretty excellent. That's a, good, that's a good move on his part. So he's going for a 10 pull, but this is going to hurt his economy going into the mid-game if she can hold this off. So he's going to have a, uh, a strong early push, and Peanut's not going to have too much early defense to defend this. A single Marine coming out right now. Let's open up the production tab here. With four Zerglings already being produced to come and attack, Peanut sees that there's an early spawning pool, so... Uh, I, her response is to pick up a second gas, okay, instead of a second barracks. That's uh, that's an okay move, I guess, because you want to. If you do manage to fend it off, you can have a, a stronger economy leading into the mid game, which will help you out macro your opponent. But in the early game, you're gonna have a lot of trouble. And Virgo sending his Zerglings to scout over here for some reason. I guess in case there's a proxy barracks, I've I didn't even think of that being an actual strategy. If the Terran opponent knows that they're right there, they can uh, install. They can build a barracks right there and then float it over and begin building proxy units. That's that's pretty sweet. That's a good idea. I didn't even think about that. And now Virgo's Zerglings coming back. He's got eight Zerglings. The Queen's going to fend off the SCV. The SCV's still causing a little bit of trouble here. The Queen's not going to be able to get to the hatchery in time to get another uh, spawn larva off as soon as it's ready, but it doesn't really matter. That's that's just a minor annoyance at that point. The SCV's going to die. No more scouting information for Peanut. we got eight Zerglings not speed upgraded headed towards Peanut's base. Peanut with only two Marines to defend. She's going to have to micro these very well and lift up that supply depot to protect her SCVs. Not microing these Marines. First Marine gets surrounded and taken out. Second Marine getting attacked, not firing back. Also gets taken out. Peanut with no defense except for SCVs. A, sec uh, a, a, a starport. That's not a second best. Like a starport going down. So she's going 1-1-1 despite this early rest. These SCVs coming off the line. SCVs are very durable. So they're fighting off these Zerglings trying to make sure there isn't they don't get off a surround. Not fighting back just yet. One Marine coming out. SCV's tanking for the Marine. The Marine's running back. SCV's now chasing back the Zerglings. But we can see that Virgo has produced even more. Well, a couple more. <laughs> Not a whole lot more. A couple more Zerglings. But he's got six in production as eggs ready to go and attack with a decent, a decent saturation of drones. Despite the fact that he's producing so many Zerglings. But Peanut did manage to hold this off with SCV's. A lot of them damaged. Some of them were killed. A bunker going down now. Only a couple of Zerglings coming in. This one Marine should be able to hold it off if it's microed properly. Taken out... Well, Dealing a lot of damage to that first Zergling. Zergling's coming around. Three Marines out now. Two Marines out, sorry. Two Marines out now. They managed to take out the... Uh, the Zerglings managed to take out the SCV building the bunker as we have more Zerglings coming in. So the Zerglings are going to be able to stream in here. They are now speed upgraded. So that's not good <laughs> for Peanuts. 
a nice a nice little wall right there forming with two marines but it's not enough one marine gets into the bunker the scv sitting idle right beside it getting ready to repair it if it takes any kind of damage but four zerglings making their way in eight zerglings making their way in one marine sitting in the bunker the scvs again having to fend off the attack by themselves scvs are pretty durable units they can ta they can stand toe to toe with only a certain number of zerglings a lot of scvs dying right here zerglings getting this around there goes the mule the zerglings taking out her entire economy marines now ooh, a single marine now getting taken out by these zerglings zerglings getting us around on the supply depot one mule still mining some SCVs, still getting gas. We see Peanut with a starport and a tech lab not doing anything. Two Marines inside the bunker, one SCV repairing. The SCV goes down. The bunker picking out the Zerglings. Zerglings can't stand up to that bunker as it is taking out the tech lab, but the Banshee in the uh, starport has already been getting constructed. If that can come out, it can save the day. It can take out as many Zerglings as it wants to. Uh, unless uh, Virgo gets something like Hydralisk to counter, he is getting a uh, lair right now and has picked up his natural expansion. So his economy is actually going to be much stronger than Peanuts because he's dealt so much damage. Zerglings still in her mineral line. Three Marines coming off the line, uh, coming out of the bunker to take out these Zerglings. Zerglings are running around doing major, major harassment. Factory not being able to produce anything. Banshee is is still in production. This, the uh, tech lab has been destroyed, so another Banshee can't come out. Only one Banshee is going to come out, leaving one Marine in the bunker. I like that idea to deal some damage to incoming Zerglings. SCV still getting taken out. Three Marines wandering around the base trying to take down these Zerglings. You need to lift off this supply depot pr to prevent those Zerglings, uh, to just limit those Zerglings' movement. Two Zerglings around still. The Banshee does finally come out and t finish off those Zerglings, but Peanut's economy is... I'm not even going to say it's in tatters. It's absolutely wrecked. There is so much she has to do to catch back up to get back into this game. We see a Hydralisk Den being produced for Virgo now, if you look at the production tab. Hydralisk Den is actually more than halfway done with, with a... Uh, Fully complete lair, but now here comes the Banshee without the cloak upgrade coming to deal some counter harassment, take out a couple of drones, but this queen is going to be able to fend off this Banshee fairly easily because the Banshee does not have cloaking tech. And uh, he is at lair tech, so even if the Banshee did have cloak, he would be able to produce an overseer fairly easily. Banshee still wandering around the back, picking off drones piecemeal here, one by one. Only takes two volleys from a Banshee to take out these drones. One at a time, she's picking off the drones. The Queen doing its best to fend it off. The Banshee now below uh, half health. And there's that Overseer that I was talking about, even though the Banshee does not have Cloak. Um, Virgo does not know that. Just in case the Banshee did have Cloak, it pays to keep that uh, Overseer around. The Banshee's going to go down to this Queen. No, it survives, but only barely. Peanut's economy is absolutely destroyed. Not yet saturating this natural expansion. Just using the hatchery's larva to produce some more Hydralisks. Well, some Hydralisks in general. And some Zerglings. So a small army for Virgo, despite the fact that he's got... Uh, larger economy. Peanuts SCVs and mules going to work, getting some more minerals for her to try and build up her counter army. She's got a, a few marines coming out, an SCV coming out, desperately trying to claw her way back into this game. She is so far behind, though. Not sure how she can come back from this unless Virgo really slips up. He needs to go in with another attack right now. The best way to hold off Hydralisks is to have uh, siege tanks, and there aren't any siege tanks right now. One siege tank being produced at the moment, so he needs to make his press in. He's pressing in with a few speedlings, but uh, you really need to bring the Hydralisks in on this too. Overlord moving around to check out the Zelnaga. Watch how another Overlord hanging out over here, just to make sure Peanut's not trying to get some sort of weird expansion off in the distance. Zerglings checking for a natural expansion for her right here, but uh, she's naturally not going to have one. <laughs> I get it, naturally. She is naturally not going to have a natural expansion. More Zerglings streaming in. Too many Marines to handle this, though. Too many Marines and a tank. The Zerglings are just going to get absolutely obliterated. They have to turn back. Peanut's got a sizable force to defend off just Zerglings. If the Hydralisks would have come along with them... Uh, actually, there's only a pair of Hydralisks here, so the Hydralisks would need to come in larger number. The Banshee, having been repaired, is now coming back to do some more counter harassment. There, but there is a Spore Crawler there in the middle of uh, Virgo's base, so the Banshee is going to not only be... Uh, get detected if it had cloak, but it's also going to take severe damage from that spore crawler if it decides to show its face again. Still only uh, gas here now, instead of saturating the uh, the minerals with those drones. I don't think Virgo was uh, was planning for the game to go quite this long. He, he doesn't have, th as I said, he's having a, he's having trouble with his uh, economy in the mid game because he's still having to produce army, and Peanut's army is actually growing while he doesn't build up his economy. So she's running off. Of, let's see what their income tabs look like. Uh, they're actually. She's actually ahead right now because of her mules. He's got... Oh! A changeling gets destroyed in her base. That was very nice by a single tank blast. Um, her economy is actually better right now, except for gas. She's got less gas coming in, but she doesn't need too much gas if you're just producing marines and uh, a siege tank here and there. But, uh, yeah, like I said, he, because of the larva limitation that he had, having to build zerglings and hydralisks to press his attack, he didn't have enough larva for drones. Now he's sitting back and producing some drones of his own, getting some more overlords, trying to macro up and try and increase his economy. But we've got a siege tank drop coming from behind. The overseer is going to see this, but I don't know if there's a whole lot that... Uh, 
Virgo can do about it. He's going to have a queen, but that's pretty much it. And a queen is not going to do a whole lot to a pair of siege tanks. The queen's going to get obliterated by that. So the siege tanks are going to drop behind the mineral line. Peanut now uh, building up a sizable force, harassing Virgo back. And oh no, sorry, they're not going to jump behind this mineral line. They're going to go behind this mineral line. This is a fairly standard tactic for Terran, actually, on this map, on Lost Temple, to set up siege tanks, maybe a Thor and a bunker sometimes up on this area. So Peanut's going to drop some siege tanks back here one siege tank only. Set up the siege mode. And Virgo isn't going to have anything to deal with this. This natural expansion is just going to get shelled like crazy. We've got Zerglings and Hydralisks coming around, but if the Hydralisks decide to come and attack these siege tanks, they're just going to get shelled and obliterated. They're moving out to the front. Virgo seems to be panicking right now, not quite knowing what he's going to do. He's got a spore... Uh, sorry, that's not a spine crawler. That's a spore crawler to try and fend off that one Banshee. Still afraid of that one Banshee, so he's overcommitted some defense to this. He's got one. He's got three spore crawlers for one potential Banshee. Uh, one Overlord coming over here to get side up on this ridge. Another common tactic is to bring uh, just one siege tank and the rest Marines and maybe an SCV in this medevac, and that's what Terran will typically do in this uh, in this situation. And Zerg can typically counter it by building spore crawler, uh, sorry, spine crawlers, and setting them along this ridge and using an Overlord for sight. But Virgo doesn't seem to know this, and these siege tanks are just shelling the ever-loving crud out of his natural expansion. Now we see an attack moving in from Virgo uh, on Peanut's natural expansion, but a siege tank already in position to guard, uh, to defend against that. He seems to have thrown away his early advantage using that ten pool because of that. Uh, mid-game economy that he was just not able to build up because he uh, built too many, he used too many of his larvae on military that were fended off by Peanut's uh, stronger siege tanks. So now we see Peanut naturally, naturally Peanut saturating her natural expansion, guarding some with some Marines to guard, a medevac, and a siege tank. There, in comes now. Uh, actually, Virgo is ahead at this point. There's, yeah, Virgo's significantly ahead. He's got more drones mining at his uh, main base, which is what he should have done in the first place. What I would have done in his position, um, and I don't, and me being just a gold player, I'm not sure if there's a, if I, uh, if I hold a lot of weight here. Oh, he's doing it right there. Here we go. He's building a second hatchery. That's what I would have done earlier. Instead of expanding out here, I would have built a second hatchery to protect against um, that from having that drop. I don't know where that, that medevac actually went. Medevac scouting out now to make sure he hasn't expanded anywhere else. That's I like that move. That's brilliant. Take out this expansion and then look for any others. But I would have built this first and used uh, two queens to produce a lot of larvae and used that to produce my hydralisks and zerglings. He was torn between building army and economy. He's tr he was desperately trying to keep his, uh, his advantage that he had earlier with that 10 pool, but Peanut held it off, and I like seeing, even though her SCVs were all destroyed in the beginning, she did not GG. A lot of players would have GG'd in that position. They would have been demoralized and said, you know what, it's not worth it, and they would have given up. But no, this this game continues, and Peanut has not only uh, clawed her way back in, she has brutally forced her way back in with tooth and nail, or in this case, machine gun, and these aren't arc light, are they? They're, uh, well, 9mm cannons. I believe they're called... Uh, for siege tanks these days, they're Crucio, Crucio shot cannons, an upgrade from the arc like shot cannons that we saw in the Brood War days. A single Marine coming out to scout this cell, not gonna watch that, getting destroyed by just a few Hydralisks. That's actually a pretty good indication to Peanut that there's not a whole lot of army on her opponent's side. She may consider attacking and taking over that Zelnaga Watchtower. Another Marine moving out. I like this persistent scouting, not having to use a comp set of her own. She's sending out just this one Marine. She's lost 50 minerals with that one Marine, but gained a lot more than 50 minerals with the scouting information from it. And now he's going to take out this Overlord. These Hydralisks not doing anything to defend. And, uh, oh, this poor spore crawler bleeding to death because it has no creep to sustain it. A second hatchery, sorry, a third hatchery being built again in Virgo's natural expansion. Finally, those Hydralis and that Zergling coming around, but that Zergling is going to, oh, that Zergling almost died to that one Marine. Still, persistent scouting is important in StarCraft 2, very, very important. We see some Mutalisks in the air now from Virgo. Uh, with this many Marines on the ground, I don't know if Mutalisks are a good idea. You want to get them behind this, uh, this mineral line, but, oof, she's already transferred all of her SCVs. No, she's main earning some back over to her main now with another command center. So she has three command centers pumping out SCVs to help rebuild her economy. That is pretty smart. Um, I like how that was, how she was able to recover from that. That's that's crazy good. Um, and I know I sound like a peanut fanboy talking like that, even though Virgo has actually, uh, even though he is thrown away most of this most of this game, he has played uh, fairly well, responding to uh, to the counterattacks that Peanut was thrown out. 
perhaps over responding with those spore calders. So here we see some siege tanks moving out, com setting that Zelnaga watchtower. Uh, Virgo's forces moving away, but the roaches coming back in. Miss micro roaches coming in. Whoa, what happened there? Something got blown up, but it wasn't uh, a roach. <laughs> I think I saw something get blown up. I was looking too too much at this roach's HP. Siege tanks now sieging up again, but then having to unsiege as these forces take small steps backwards, like an intricate intricate dance. And Overlord getting picked off by Peanuts Marines. Uh, Peanut now also expanding here to the top left. Island expansion. Very defended, uh, except against these Mutalisks. Where are those Mutalisks? If those Mutalisks spot that, they can take out that expansion, but I don't think that they're going to be focusing too much in the top left. It would help to have an Overseer patrolling out there, but now we see Mutalisks getting attacked by these uh, Missile Turrets. I don't know if Missile Turrets have splash damage. It looks like they do. It looks like they have a small degree of splash. Absolutely decimating, well, not necessarily decimating, but dealing a hefty amount of damage to these Mutalisks, forcing them to run away. Also, they didn't have very much in the way of targets here. Uh, there there aren't very many SCVs at either base, so she's still trying to saturate her expansion and her natural expansion, but he's, she's got too many Marines to deal with his... Uh, uh, for, for these Mutalisks to make any kind of ground. The Marines just popping those Mutalisks overhead. Siege tanks having to siege up, but they are out of position as well, topping off each siege tank, each siege tank getting destroyed, Bam, one by one, and we can see underneath the medevacs, the marines are just getting destroyed by these roaches and hydralis. Medevacs are picking up the marines now, having to run away. Only three hydralis to fight off these medevacs. Medevacs are flying for their lives. Run, run, run. Use those boosters. Check them out. Like, they're just flying. That looks cool. I like how that looks. Anyway, Virgo's forces following Peanut's medevacs back to the natural expansion where there's just a skeleton crew, a skeleton defense force. If he were to press in right now, I'm not sure that Peanut would be able to hold it off. Then again, she could drop these marines out, but siege tanks are not sieged up. Roaches are going to destroy these siege tanks up in the front. They are not sieged. Here comes another siege tank trying to move up to the high ground. That's the, that's the position you want them to be in right there. Roaches trying to follow up. There are no, There's very little army left for Peanut. A couple of marines, a couple of siege tanks. Well, a couple of marines and one siege tank, a couple of medevacs in the air. Uh, one of them still filled with marines, half full with marines, still healing up the forces on the ground, but not doing too much otherwise. And we see the SCVs having to come off the line yet again. SCVs to the rescue. Hero SCVs, man. These things are these things are way too durable for their own good. They're like little little tanks on the all, all their own, but not tanky enough to handle a force this big. One siege tank now very far up on the high ground, picking off the edges of these roaches here. These forces are a little too far in there. We go moving back up to take out the SCVs over here. Oh, looks like Pina's in danger yet again. Virgo has managed to counter her counter and still continues to harass her economy, except now he's got an expansion going. Oh, one Mutal is coming in to join, the, uh, to join the fight, but taking too much damage. Going to be fairly useless if any Marines come out. Siege tanks still fighting off two siege tanks, still fighting off these roaches, roaches and uh, two Hydras taking out the missile turret now and going for the orbital command center it would be a wise idea to lift that orbital command center off or at least get these two SCVs repairing she's gonna lose it siege tanks still shelling just the edge forces lift it off but it's too late to the two hydras were able to take it out and if they weren't able to then it was gonna burn on its own anyway it was too low on health so peanut losing that expansion but with a very strong very formidable expansion up here uh, with four missile turrets still unscouted as well so it's got the cover of the fog of war to protect it and if it didn't have that cover these missile turrets would do a great job in fending off those middle lists. and uh, Virgo does not have the necessary tech to drop units on that expansion so that is a very fortified expansion right now very safe still pulling in some resources for peanut and peanut with an idle SCV right here that's not a that's not a good thing at the moment considering how much economic harassment she's taking with only four siege tanks and four marines. Well, four siege tanks is actually still a fairly formidable force, and you've got some marines in these medevacs too, so we see a lot. We, we still see a, a considerable defense force if she would get them uh, organized, and Virgo, on the other hand, has mined out of his main, so he is back on one base. One base and three hatcheries is not where a Zerg player wants to be. A Zerg player does not want to have one base and three hatcheries. It looks like Virgo has, let's see, yes, Virgo has spotted this expansion with these Mutalisks. He can't get in. There's no way. The, uh, Missile turrets are going to fend them off. He might be able to get in and pick off one SCV, but that would not be worth the expenditure in minerals and gas that's required for mutalisks. Three fresh mutalisks over here that could join the fray, but again, not a good idea. Four roaches, a few zerglings, just a handful of units on either side, except Peanut, I believe, has the advantage at this particular point with a much larger army. And she's got some Hellions coming out into the fray with uh, two factories that were once producing sea tanks are now producing Hellions. Might as well put some use to them because she's not pulling in a whole lot of gas at the moment. These barracks with no uh, attachments on them producing a sizable marine force, which is a good idea. Because Oh, one Hellion coming in now to uh, scout out some 
got himself some Zerg. A, a stream of flame attacking one roach and then running off, just being annoying, really. He's going to come back and tell his buddies with a beard. It's like, yeah, man, I saw, I saw like 4,000 roaches attacking these rocks. You know, he's going to exaggerate when he actually gets there. And uh, so I attacked one and they all died. Here comes an attack <laughs> in the middle of the uh, map by the Zelnaga. Watch our roaches and uh, Hydras are going to get destroyed by these tanks. These four tanks in the back probably stand to bring an SCV along to repair because she doesn't have too much in the way of... Uh, being able to reproduce these units until she gets uh, her natural expansion running along with that expansion in the back uh, at, the, at the corners. These Mutalists could be much better used defending his base right now. Virgo's got them way up there in the corner. Probably have forgotten about them by this point. A lot of Marines, a lot of tanks. Um, what was that? Is that a Zergling? Running in on his own? Probably. But now sieging up just outside of Virgo's base, Virgo's got some uh, Corruptors in the mix to take out these uh, medevacs, I suppose. Hydralisks would have been uh, just as good for that purpose. These corruptors can't do anything to the ground units. However, they can corrupt these siege tanks, making them take more damage. So that's a, that's one useful uh, ability with corruptors. And he's only got a couple, so he didn't invest too many. He didn't invest two of them. He does have a lot of roaches. Siege tanks are the absolute counter to roaches, though. Number of zerglings on the ground. But we've got hellions. Well, we actually don't have any hellions in this mix. Com setting now to begin taking out these uh, creep tumors. Just force that creep to secede so that she can move in. You don't want that creep near your units because these banelings move faster on creep and those banelings can do a that number of banelings can do a serious amount of damage to this number of marines and if that happens then these mutalisks are going to be able to clean house along with the roaches. So those marines are really are while the siege tanks will be doing the damage the marines really are the key to this attack force because they can take out the uh, corruptors and the mutalisks and without those marines there the air units are just going to have a field day. So we got sort of a stalemate hanging back here. Mutalis coming around the side, trying to take out these, uh, trying to test the line here, trying to take out these siege tanks. The Marine takes a single paw shot, showing, hey, I'm in range of you. Don't you dare even try it. There's so many of us here waiting for these um, banelings to, mar to uh, march in. But we do see a greater spire morphing somewhere here for... Uh, here it is, morphing for Virgo. So a greater spire. These corruptors are going to turn into broodlords. Anytime you spot corruptors, you've got to suspect broodlords coming. So they're going to turn into broodlords and trying to hope, hopefully outrange those things. Oh, the bailing is going in, taking out a number of marines, but not a whole lot of them. Those were poorly microed, and these siege tanks just destroying this frontal force. A few units in the back are still alive, and now they're moving, and they could have, they would have, they should have moved in a lot sooner. Uh, four mutalisks coming, with those mutalisks still up at the top of the map could have been much more use here. Those Marines are going to pop those Mutalists, leaving alive two siege tanks, and no significant forces are left for Virgo. He's going to have to use his larva. Here we go. He's producing six Mutalisks and six Zerglings. That's what you need right here. Mutalisks, you need a... Well, I don't know. He needs more Banelings, really. He, he needs more. So those Zerglings are probably going to become Banelings. But as far as his gas production is concerned, he doesn't have enough to really produce a significant number of Banelings. And now we see drones coming off the line to surround that siege tank. Siege tanks kind of go down to the mining claws of those drones, and the Marines still fighting their way. Should have microed those back. Pulled them back a little bit. Uh, Mutalisks take out the medevac. The Marines are still absolutely roasting these drones, so the drones are not attacking. The drones need to be selected and attacked. They could have taken out this force. They could have dealt a significant amount of damage to this force, but the drones are running back with just a handful of Marines left. Some roaches coming out. The Marines are going to have some trouble against these roaches. The Marines don't deal too much damage to them. Peanut now pulling her forces back, hoping to get some reinforcements in. And here they come, a large force of reinforcements coming in to help these poor Marines, these veteran Marines who, are, who have been combat hardened up in the front, coming in to fresh blood help them out. Another siege tank in the back. Oh, siege tank quickly going down. Siege tank destroyed rather rapidly. And we see these Marines again forming this line that they can, this sort of surround they get around the units. And that's when they become very, very deadly when you've got so many. Oh, Virgo doesn't even GG. He just flat out leaves the game. So, wow, that was an excellent game. I love the back and forth that we see there. Wow, actually, under the cover of, uh, of the Fog of War, those greater spires look awesome. Look at that. That's crazy. Everything Zerg looks awesome. I like the look of this base. But wow, that was that was intense. Siege tanks and Marines. Good micro battles going on there. Well, good battles going on there. <laughs> they were uh if either side were to ma were to out macro the other side, it would have turned very it, basically what I'm trying to say is that macro would have played a major role in each of those battles. Sorry, micro would have played a role in each of those battles. Man, what a way to end this commentary, huh? Thanks a lot, Peanut, for sending this over. She sent me an email saying, hey, I noticed you said I didn't send you very many TVZs, so that's because she sent this over to me. And wow, it turned out to be a very good game. Again, I keep coming back to these Mutalisks. They came out here, they spotted this expansion, and then they were just forgotten. They could have done so much out here. They could have 
taken out that first force, those veteran Marines I was talking about, and uh, that would have severely weakened the effectiveness of Peanut's incoming reinforcements. But anyway, the game is done. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. GG, and I will see you next time.